No, I believe we are all on a hero's quest. A quest to become a personal legend of being the hero of your own story. Making the promise to the one that only matters. This is my story, so far. I felt myself being pulled into practitioner training for a second time. It started with a feeling of not being a quitter, then quickly morphed into asking, what am I afraid of finding out? Could there be something so terrible that I could not bear to confront it? The answer to those questions was a resounding no. I needed to finally break through the limiting beliefs and sabotaging behaviors. It reminded me of William Ernest Henley's Invictus poem, and I'd like to recite that for you now. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears, looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. You know, the message from this poem is to have courage in the face of death, or whatever circumstances feels like death that we may encounter. And in those moments of life that I face it with dignity, despite what may appear to be all around me. Now I've completed training and become certified in numerous modalities over the years. And while the training is powerful, I find myself spending too much time in my head. The head work has only gotten me so far, and it's time for heart and gut work to begin. I say heart and gut work because in order to embody something, the journey must transition from I know in my head to I know in my heart. That's a little deeper knowing to finally, I know that I know because the feeling comes from my gut. You know, practitioner training is providing me with the tools to do just that. Allow me to illustrate what I mean. The metaphysical chart or symbol is a perfect demonstration of the hero's journey. You know, the journey begins with an idea or a thought. And for me, this begins with my intention for this class. You know, to engage deeply with the materials and my peers, to exercise love and kindness, especially to me, and in doing so, I embody the philosophy of the science of mind by actively engaging in its principles and the spiritual practices in my daily life. You know, my journey begins and ends in, know, in knowing that my life is surrounded by God. And for the journey to be complete, it must be both a descension and an ascension. Allow me to explain. You know, as with any journey, we require tools to assist us. The tools I have chosen for this journey are the spiritual principles of freedom, embodied with the practice of direct revelation through visioning, the practice of intentional manifestation through spiritual mind treatment, practice of sacred study through contemplation in this course. And while these tools are powerful, they are best supported by guiding principles. And for me, there are three that resonate the most. I believe the ultimate goal of life is the complete emancipation of all discord of every nature. And in so doing, it transmute into something positive and powerful. I believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. It is God living through me, as me. And I believe in my own soul, my own spirit, and my own destiny, for all life is God. I am the master of my fate and the captain of my ship. So armed with these tools, my dissension into the law begins to reveal aspects of my life that require some healing. Shame from childhood and adult trauma the feelings of not being good enough and the fear of being alone. For any hero on their journey, they're going to encounter hardships, trials, and tribulations. Mine show up as splintered efforts in deploying the spiritual practices. As I've conned myself into believing that I'm deploying freedom, just as the principle states, to choose and create our experience in life. Well, wouldn't you know, that knife cuts both ways. I'm creating exactly that which is chosen, and here's the kicker, nothing is changing. 
Luckily on my journey, as in any hero's journey, we encounter a mentor. Well, I actually had two. Through conversations with my prayer partner, we revealed just how much I spend still in my head. It is first level knowledge that has yet to descend into my heart. My prayer partner is the most present, most in the moment person I have met. Powerful, yet quiet, built from years of hard and heavy work. She reflects upon me the truth that resides in me. The second mentor comes in the form of a group. It is this Sunday group, with all our vulnerability and willingness to work on ourselves, it reveals to me that I am never alone. With thoughtful guidance from Reverend Mark and Dana, I find my heart opening more and more daily. As I settle into a daily ritual, my life unfolds more easily and with purposeful intention. The feelings are still there, but they no longer have the hold they once have. I'm better equipped now to deal with them. It's time to ascend. Now the ascension is the road back to spirit, it is the awareness of where I'm living in the stages of consciousness. This is not a straight line, like the stock market, up and down, going, going through to me, by me, through me, as me, yet always in an upward direction. I don't know if I will ever get to a point where I live consistently in the as me stage, and I don't think that's the point of the journey. For God created the universe to experience growth because without it, there is only perfection. And how boring is that? So let's look back at those earlier questions. What am I afraid of finding out? I discovered that I have always been afraid of finding out that I am not, that I am loved just as I am. Today, I'm more accepting of this truth and have more work to do in this area. The next question is, could there be something so terrible that I could not bear to confront it? Well, illusion exists in the stories I tell myself. So I can change that story to one of truth. And when I do, I discover that I am powerful beyond measure. I also learned that as the master of my fate, it is my free will to choose the life I wish to manifest. And I choose to manifest a life of passion, purpose, and power. Just as Arjuna had Krishna guiding him, I and the Father are one, the captains of my ship. And so I close my journey with this treatment. This is what I know to be true, that I am pure spirit. I always have been and I always will be. And inside of me resides a place of quietness, confidence and security, where all things are known and understood. This is the universal mind, God, of which I am part and which responds to me as I ask of it. I know that all things, all space and time and life are here in the depths of my soul. Smaller than small and greater than great meet and unite in me. That which I thought was ego, I never was at all. For it was a changing thing, mirroring the seasons of life. I am not a thing of time or circumstance. I am spirit, pure and eternal, birthless, deathless, changeless. I am patient for all time, for I am all time. I am wise. I contain the knowledge of all things. I am rich, for there is no limit to the abundance I may create for my very self. I am successful, for I only need to think to achieve. So I give thanks. Thanks for the things that have been revealed to me and the things yet to be revealed. For the Creator and I are one. Releasing this word into the law, I let go and I let it be, and so it is.